Hi, this is Enwa Innovation YouTube channel. In this video, we will see about the rate limiting. The agenda covered in this video are why do we need rate limiting and we will see about the different rate limiting algorithms like fixed window algorithm, sliding window algorithm, sliding window algorithm with memory optimization and then token bucket algorithm and leaky bucket algorithm. The rate limiting in APIs involve controlling the rate at which the clients can make request to the API endpoint. This is typically done by imposing restrictions on the number of requests a client can make within a specific time window, such as a minute, a hour, or a day. Rate limiting is implemented to ensure that API servers remain available, responsive, and secure, while also preventing abuse or excessive usage of a particular endpoint. The main reason to implement the rate limiting are Rate limiting prevents a server from being overwhelmed by too many requests at once. This request can be legitimate or done by a hacker with the intention to bring down the server, which is denial of service attack or DOS attack. Without rate limiting, a sudden influx of request could lead to degraded performance or even a server crash. Hacker can use this denial of service attack. In the denial of service attack, the attacker typically uses a single computer or network to flood a target server or network with excessive traffic, overwhelming its capacity to handle legitimate requests. Here, all the requests come from a single IP address, so restricting the number of requests a single IP address can make in a given period can mitigate the denial of service attack. The attacker can also employ distributed denial of service attack which is also called as DDoS attack. The attacker coordinates a network of compromised computers often called as a botnet to simultaneously send a flood of traffic to the target API. DDoS attack can be more challenging to detect and mitigate compared to the DOS attack because they involve traffic from multiple sources which makes it harder to distinguish legitimate traffic from malicious traffic. So this DDoS attack can be mitigated by controlling the total number of requests a server can take in a given time period. Rate limiting also helps in monetizing the API. Typically, API are monetized based on the restrictions with the number of requests made in a hour. Here, the user buys the API key and the API key passed along with the request which is used to throttle the request. For example, there can be three plans like free plan where the user can make 10 requests per hour for free, basic plan where the user can make 100 API calls per hour and the pro plan can be like 1000 requests per hour. The rate limiting also helps to improve the performance of the underlying API resources like databases, queues and uh, any other data sources. The restrictions on the rate can be performed in different ways. First one is simply ignore the incoming request if the limit is reached. Second, the server can send out a 429 response code which implies too many request response. When sending the 429 response code, the server can also send out other supporting information in the headers, which includes retry after. The retry after header is to determine when the client can retry. This will be usually in seconds. Example, here the value is 30, that means a client can retry this request after 30 seconds. This will help in automatic retries in the microservices architecture and if this call is made by one service to another service. The X rate limit limit header specifies the total number of requests allowed within the current rate limit window. If the user is using a paid API, this will provide information to the user how many requests the client can send in a period. Example, 1000 requests per hour. X rate limit remaining X rate limit remaining header indicates the number of requests remaining before reaching the rate limit. If the client is using 1000 requests per hour plan and if the client already made 850 requests in that period, then this header will contain 150 denoting the number of further requests user can make in that period. X rate limit reset. The X rate limit reset header specifies the time, usually in Unix epoch time, when the rate limit will be reset and the client can make the new request without encountering the 499 error code. X rate limit reset after. The X rate limit reset after header indicates the duration in seconds 
after which the rate limit will be reset example 60 seconds that means here the rate limit will be reset after 60 seconds the server can also employ graceful degradation that is the requests are still processed but with reduced priority or by queuing the request which increases the latency for those requests now we will see about different rate limiting algorithms first we will see about the fixed window algorithm this is one of the most basic rate limiting algorithm it is a simple approach to control the rate at which the client can access a particular service or endpoint it imposes a constant fixed limit on the number of requests that a client can make within a specific time window once the limit is reached any additional request within that fixed window are rejected with an appropriate response code such as 429 too many requests let's see this with an example here we define the fixed 20 requests per minute rate limit so initially the counter is set to 0 whenever a new request comes in that period then the counter is incremented and verified if the counter value is less than the request per minute value then the request is processed and the response is returned to the client if the counter value is greater than the request per minute value then the request will not be processed and 429 response is sent here the one key thing to notice whatever the number of request we receive in a period this will be reset after every new period start for example if the rate limit is set to a minute the limit will get reset at the start of every minute the advantages of using the fixed window algorithm is fixed window algorithm is straight forward to implement and understand it does not require a complex data structures or algorithm it requires only a simple counter to track the request per window because of this the fixed window algorithm is simple easy to implement and requires very less memory to store the counter the disadvantages of using fixed rate limit algorithm are not customizable to allow special conditions like burst traffic fixed rate limiting may not effectively mitigate denial of service attack where malicious users intentionally flood a system with a large number of requests to overwhelm its resources the fixed rate limit may be easily exceeded during such attacks leading to service degradation or outage this also results in wastage of server computing resource if the request limit is reached well before the end of the window this results in wastage of server resources during this time fixed rate limit algorithm is not accurate because the limit will reset before every window range this leads to inaccurate request rate limit for example here the number of request accepted during the range 9 minute 30 seconds to 10 minute 30 seconds is 26 because it does not account for the number of request accepted in the previous window now we'll see about sliding window rate limiting algorithm sliding window rate limiting is a dynamic approach to control the rate at which clients can access an api unlike fixed rate limiting where the number of request is constant for a specific time period sliding window rate limiting tracks the requests over a continuous window that moves forward in real time this allows for more flexibility in handling both seat traffic patterns and provides more accurate representation of current request rates let's see this with an example first we need to define the rate limit of the sliding period range here it is 20 requests per minute here we need to keep track of the request incoming timestamp for the window period here the linked list can be used to store the request with the timestamp for the window period before processing each incoming request we need to check if the head of the linked list is within the period range if it is not within the window period range then the current head is removed this is iteratively done till the head is within the period range if the count of the request within the window exceeds the limit reject the request and return 429 too many request response when the first request comes in the linked list is empty so the request is allowed to be processed and then this request timestamp is added to the linked list when the next request comes in then the head of the linked list is verified to check if it is within the current sliding window range here the head of the linked list is 9 minute and 04 second which is within the current sliding window range so this request is also processed and the timestamp is added to the tail of the linked list this is performed for all the incoming request i will let this animation run till we hit the sliding window limit
Here the incoming request comes at timestamp 9 minute and 52 seconds. The link list head timestamp is 9 minute 4 second which is within the prior range. Here the link list size is already at 20 which is the sliding window limit. So the new request is rejected with the response code 429. Now 7 requests are also rejected because of this falls in the same window range. When the new request comes in at 10 minutes 7 seconds, we check the link list head if it is within the period range. Now the head 9 minutes 04 second is not in the sliding window range. So this head is removed. Now there are only 19 requests in this period range. So the new request is accepted and the timestamp is added to the tail of the link list. I will let this animation run for some more requests so you will get more clarity about the sliding window algorithm. The advantages of using sliding window rate limiting is accuracy. Sliding window rate limiting provides a more accurate representation of current request rates compared to the fixed window rate limiting. It considers requests over a continuous time window allowing for better handling of bursty traffic patterns. The sliding window approach is flexible to adjust dynamically to changes in the request rates and traffic patterns. It can adapt to sudden spikes or drops in the traffic more effectively, ensuring efficient resource utilization. Sliding window rate limiting offers finer granularity in controlling access to resources. Clients are limited based on the recent request behavior within the sliding time window, allowing for more precise rate limiting. The downsides of using sliding window rate limiters are implementing sliding window rate limiting may require more complex logic and data structures compared to fixed rate limiting. Managing the sliding window and tracking requests in real time can add complexity to the system. Maintaining a sliding time window and updating request counts in real time can impose additional resource overhead on the system, especially in high traffic environments. This may require more computational resources and infrastructure capacity. In distributed systems, race condition may arise when updating request count within the sliding time window concurrently. Synchronization mechanisms are needed to ensure data consistency and prevent race conditions. Here we need to also use some high performance data sources like Redis and we need to use centralized data store. There is a variant of sliding window which is memory efficient. Here the individual request timestamps are not captured. Instead the number of processed requests in the previous window is captured and we assume a constant rate of request during the previous fixed window period. Let's take if we have 20 requests in the previous fixed window then it is treated as constant rate like one request every three seconds. When the first request comes in the current window then the request in the current window is added within the previous sliding window percentage. We will see this with an example. A request comes in at 10 minute one second. So we need to find the approximate requests arrived in the last 59 seconds of the last fixed window. To calculate the approximate count Use the formula total successful request in the last fixed window period 20 multiplied by 60 which is total seconds minus current window second 1 divided by 60 which is approximately equivalent to 19.6. We can round it off to 20. So 20 plus the current request 1 which is exceeding the limit. So we are rejecting the request with 429 response code. Now there is another request comes in at 10 minute 4 second. Now we need to find the approximate request count for the last 56 seconds in the last fixed window. Here it is 19 plus the current window request count 1 which is 20. So this request is processed. The advantages of using this variant of sliding rate limiting algorithm is this variant of sliding rate limiting is fairly accurate. Since it does not store the timestamp of the incoming request, it is memory efficient. The disadvantages of using this variant of sliding window rate limiting algorithm is as this algorithm assumes a constant rate of request during a previous fixed window period. So this is only approximate representation of requests in the previous window, not accurate. Now we will see about the token bucket rate limiting algorithm. Token bucket rate limiting is a popular method for rate limiting in computer networks 
and distributed system. It allows for a burst of traffic to be accommodated while still enforcing an average rate limit over time. Here we have a bucket which has certain capacity and it can hold token as per the bucket capacity. Whenever a new request comes in, the request consumes a token. If there is no token left in the bucket, then the incoming request is rejected with 429 error code. These tokens are refilled at certain rate based on the rate limiting needs. We will see this with an example. We will design a rate limiter which allows 6 requests per minute. So it is good to have the bucket capacity as twice the size of the limit allowed per period. Initially, we have a bucket with a capacity of 12. Since we need to allow 6 requests per minute, the refill rate is 1 token every 10 seconds. Every incoming request consumes a token and the initial full bucket capacity tokens allows burst traffic. Here the first request comes at 9 minute and 1 second and consumes a token in the bucket. So there are like 11 tokens remaining in the bucket. Second request comes at 9 minute 2 second consumes 1 token. And the next 10 request comes before 9 minute 10 seconds. So the bucket becomes empty. Now a new request comes at 9 minute 9 second. Now the bucket is empty. So the request is rejected and 429 response code is sent back to the client. Now at 9 minute 10 second, the bucket is refilled with one token. Another request comes at 9 minute 12 second, which consumes this token and the request is processed. Now all the request which comes before next refill time, 9 minute 20 seconds will be rejected. If the bucket reaches the capacity, then all the further refills which overflows the capacity will be discarded. There are different popular services which uses token bucket algorithm. Some of them are Nginx, a popular web server and reverse proxy server provides rate limiting features based on the token bucket algorithm. It allows administrators to limit the number of requests per second, minute, hour or day. Next is Google Cloud Platform GCP. GCP uses token bucket rate limiting in its API gateway and other services to manage and control API traffic. It allows users to configure rate limits based on tokens per time period. AWS offers rate limiting features in the services like API gateway, AWS WAF, Web Application Firewall. These features use algorithms similar to the token bucket to control incoming HTTP request and protect against DDoS attacks. Twitter uses token bucket algorithm to enforce rate limiting on its API endpoints. Developers integrating with the Twitter API or X API are subject to various rate limits based on the type of request and the authentication level. The popular streaming platform Netflix employs token bucket algorithm to manage API traffic from its millions of subscribers. It helps ensure the API endpoints remain available and responsive under varying load conditions. GitHub GitHub API rate limiting is also based on token bucket algorithm. Developers using the GitHub API are subjected to rate limits that vary depends on factors like authentication status and endpoint usage. Cloudflare, a content delivery network and security company uses token bucket rate limiting in its firewall and security features to protect websites and APIs from abusive traffic and DDoS attacks. Pros of token buckets are the token bucket can handle burst of traffic that is short term burst beyond the average rate. The burst traffic can be increased or reduced by tuning the bucket size at the same time it can handle average rate limit. The token bucket is straightforward making the algorithm relatively easy to implement and widely used. Since the token bucket algorithm does not need to capture the timestamps of the request like sliding window rate limiting algorithm, it is memory optimized. The disadvantages of using token bucket rate limiting algorithms are fine tuning the bucket size and the refill rate requests frequent checks and updates. The token bucket algorithm brings in additional computational overhead since it need to frequently update and check the token count can add computational overhead especially during high load conditions. The token bucket algorithm requires maintaining the state of the token bucket that is current token count and last refill time which can be complex in distributed systems. Now we'll see about the leaky bucket 
ट्रेड लिमिटिंग अलगाधम द लिकी बकेट ट्रेड लिमिटिंग अलगाधम कैन बी एक्सप्लेन विद अन लागी ऑफ हाउ अ बकेट विद अ कांस्टेंट लीक विल ओवरफ्लो इफ एदर द एवरेज रेट एट व्हिच द वाटर इज पोर्ड इन एक्सीड्स द रेट एट व्हिच द बकेट लीक्स आर इफ मोर वाटर देन द कैपेसिटी ऑफ द बकेट इज पोर्ड इन ऑल एट वंस so the key terminologies are bucket capacity the bucket capacity is a finite capacity representing the maximum number of request a bucket can hold this will be typically a queue data structure so that you will be also holding the first in first out drip rate the bucket leaks at a constant rate through the hole which represents the rate at which the requests are processed when a new request arrives it is added to the bucket if the bucket is full the request is discarded with a 400 in response code to maintain the rate limit let's take we have a bucket capacity of 10 represented as a queue here and the leak rate is one request per second when a new request comes in it checks if the queue is full if the queue is not full then the request will be placed in the queue and this request is immediately leaked out that means it is processed by the server since the leak rate is one request per second if there is a burst of request in the next second that is 15 requests coming in then only 10 requests will be placed in the queue to be processed one is immediately leaked and the remaining five requests will be rejected with the response code 429 The server will only process at a constant rate defined as the leak rate irrespective of the incoming load. The pros of the leaky bucket algorithm are streamlined traffic flow ensures a consistent flow of requests preventing sudden burst from overwhelming the underlying systems. Leaky bucket is easy to implement since we need only two parameter one is bucket size and another one is leaking rate. Disadvantages of using leaky bucket algorithm are rate limit not suitable for burst of traffic. Some services may require burst of traffic for a limited time. The constant leak rate may not be flexible for systems with high variable traffic patterns. Potential delays: legitimate requests may be delayed or discarded during high traffic periods. Finally, in the distributed system, which is horizontally scaled, if you are using any of this algorithm, managing the state of the rate limiters like counter, remaining tokens, or the last refill rate, etc., will be tricky. the better solution is to use the fast memory systems like redis and make it centralized and then use consistent hashing so that this rate limiting data so doesn't become a bottleneck for your input requests thanks for watching for more technical videos subscribe to this channel if you like this video hit the thumbs up button